This is a patient who was transferred to our care with a fresh bowel duct injury from another institution. After ruling out arterial injury quickly after surgery, the patient was transferred for emergency and definitive care. Upon exploration, we could see that the gallbladder was still attached to the bile duct. A clip across the transected proximal biliary tree was removed. In order to create more room to visualize the operative field, the falciform ligament and ligamentum teres were detached. This allowed us to retract and see the operative field somewhat better. The tissue was removed and moved out of the way so that we could fully assess the porta hepatis and the biliary tree. Here we can see the bile duct seems to have a decent lumen and there's lots of extra hepatic bile duct. In order to evaluate whether to repair now or otherwise, we can see the anatomy is very clear. There are no accessory ducts. We can clearly see this and in fact it was so clear that I did not do a cholangiogram as a result of this. There's no arterial injury. We can clearly see the right hepatic artery and further down in the porta hepatis, the main hepatic artery branches in the left hepatic. There's a long extra hepatic bile duct making repair more facile. And also we can see that there's no thermal injury to the duct. All of this lines up to allowing for an early repair. In terms of a laparoscopic repair, we have a nice wide bile duct to anastomose to. In order to facilitate repair, the gallbladder is removed first by identifying the cystic artery and clipping and dividing it. And then we freshen up the transected edge of the bile duct and can see nice, healthy bleeding edges. And we also use this as an opportunity to remove the gallbladder, thus creating more room as well. Again, the clear arterial anatomy and extrahepatic biliary anatomy with no accessory ducts is confirmed. Because of the long extrahepatic duct as well, this is an opportunity for intracorporeal repair. So we suitably select a limb of bowel for the rule limb and create a window in the transverse mesocolon. This allows us to prepare a retrocolic rulim. After the limb is appropriately situated beside the injury, we prepare for an enticide bilioenteric reconstruction. Again, the bile duct is quite long and has a decent diameter, but to increase the patency of the anastomosis, we fish mouth the bile duct somewhat to make the anastomosis even wider. And this allows for a very wide anastomosis. The camera is then brought through a port in the right flank, allowing us a more optimal view for suturing. A hole is made in the small bowel for the bilioenteric reconstruction and a stay suture at the apex of the anastomosis is deployed. Using a running braided foro suture, we do a running anastomosis of the back wall of the bowel to the bile duct is the first part of the ductimucosa anastomosis. Once the back wall of the anastomosis has been completed, we keep tension on the suture and prepare to do the front wall. Here you can see how wide open the anastomosis is. Another suture is used in order to run the front wall of the anastomosis closed, again in a ductimucosa fashion, taking careful bites and being careful not to occlude the lumen. The suture is tied down and the anastomosis is completed. A clean white sponge test is done to ensure that there's no bile leak and we can see that the sponge continues to be clean and white with no yellow to indicate no bile leak. Here's the anastomosis 
It looks wide open, patent, and sound. As a precaution, a Jackson Pratt drain is placed adjacent to the anastomosis. Approximately 40 centimeters downstream from the hepaticojejunostomy, we complete our rule limb by creating our enteroenterostomy using a stapled technique. And then we will suture closed the common opening using a running 3-0 braided suture. And this concludes the operation. This patient did very well and was discharged uneventfully shortly after surgery.